Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Eric. And I'm Lisa, authors of Habits That Create a Happy, Excited, Confident You. Yeah, it's it's really great. Thanks, you know, it's really great for you guys to join us. You know, we really appreciate you guys being here. This has been a, a testing ground for us, you know. It's really a new stepping into our journey. And that's why we honor, you know, your your commitment of being here and to improve your life. And to be on your own journey doing that as well. Yeah, I mean it's really exciting. I mean, it's you know we're we're getting we're getting bold. We're doing more things. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but on our YouTube channel and uh, we're putting more videos out there. And we just did a meditation. We'll be sharing that today. I finally got our you know our meditation recorded. So it's really um, exciting. Yeah, on this great day of Cinco de Mayo, <laughs> it feels really wonderful to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, today we're talking about the four big blunders that conscious couples make that prevent intimacy. So really, yeah, this is delving into it. This is actually probably one of my favorite topics because of the intimacy that we have such greatly improved in our relationship, in our lives, and how it has really brought us together um, as a couple, even more powerful. Um, just not just in the bedroom. But it's brought it out to how we communicate in so many air, other areas of our lives, you yeah. know, working together, being together, raising our children together. Um, but the bedroom part, it begins. It begins yeah. with, you know, your free expression of yourself. Yeah, but that's where, you know, that's the, like the air, like, that's like the area for the couples, you know. That's usually the area where only me and you are usually in, except my kids sneak in the bed at night or something. But. Yeah. <laughs> But you know that's our that's our sacred space, you know, and that's we consider our relationship a sacred journey together, and then those are where we have our sacred moments together. Right. Um. It's really that area where, um, you you pull together that connection of yourself, and yeah. that you know you 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 get into that deepest moment of yourself because that it really requires you to be vulnerable. Yeah. And wow. you have to trust. And that it isn't always there with yourself. Yeah. It, you know, that, that comes from one of the blunders is the lack of communication. You know, thinking that that communication really doesn't apply in the bedroom. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> you're making assumptions that it's not really needed there. But I think it is. That's more important than anything, really. Yeah, it was. Um, it's a big, it's a big, you know, it's a big thing. Yeah. It, it belongs in the bedroom because if you don't have that, communication in the bedroom, you're not able to express your wants, you need your desires, your pleasures, you know, what you don't like, what you do like, but it's really about expressing yourself. Self, right. And getting, you know, everyone has needs and everybody has a different need. You know, some are more sensual, some are more verbal, some are more pleasurable. You know, it's, it really depends on the person. And when you don't have that communication, you're not expressing that to the other person. You're not having those needs met. Yeah. So. And in, in, in this part, we're, we are talking about the verbal communication because there's other ways to communicate. It's, you know, there's your physical part of it. But in this sense, we are talking about the verbal mm -hmm. communication within the relationship because it, it's so the greater importance to speak from your heart. Mm. of what you know of what you love and what you like and you know how you feel and those are, they're such great importance mm. to bring into it yeah i mean once i mean it's, re it's really about honesty and you know we really didn't know that until you know lisa had unraveled some of her trauma yeah. in her life and i yeah. didn't know about it so i was you know i never knew that this was affecting our relationship as a whole. So yeah, we you know we used to say um, we used to say things like you know that was awesome. You know you know these areas of when you get done making love and you say oh my gosh that was awesome and you know these days I don't even know the word because <laughs> what I didn't realize through holding myself back with my abuse that I had that I wasn't fully expressing myself 
you know, uh, there was times where we were together intimately in the bedroom, mm -hmm. but there wasn't, I, there wasn't me fully being present with myself. Right. I didn't know myself. I didn't know that I had a voice even greater than what I had because I hadn't really been in touch with what I felt pleasurable. Yeah. Two, what about expectations? I mean, um, that coming from, that's another one of the blunders too, is expectations. And when you're having an outcome or mind, something in mind without a proper address in the overall experience, I mean, yeah, it, were there points where you didn't think because maybe you had negative feelings towards men for quite a while and how that affected our relationship? I did. I had a very, very negative aspect towards men. And um, sorry to all the men out there, but when you're hurt, in such a way mm -hmm. and when you you not in your place of your being and when you don't know yourself you had but you i was also hurt by a man right so i had a viewpoint of like i'm going to say this straight out my saying was you know at this point in my life i thought all men sucked <laughs> <laughs> and sorry i'm being honest because that's the way that i feel you know right. i right. was i was if this was before we met i even had this because i had a bad experience you know that I really just didn't know how to I didn't know what to expect right when a good man came to me and this happens a lot it's really the expectation part some you know letting go of the expectation I didn't know what to expect in an intimate relationship at all I had never been in an intimate relationship mm -hmm. um, I had been hurt I had been let down I had to forgive myself Right. I mean, this was all stuff that I had to learn how to do. I, I had to find out how to do because I didn't know what to expect. So when your expectations are up on one level, you're, there's, you know, there's nothing, you don't know what to do. Right. You don't. That's been our, that's, you know, our, our journey has been amazing together because we've, you know, unraveled all these, these key in, in ingredients and it's really yeah, um, it's really allowed us to go more, mm -hmm. and you know, and really express ourselves. <laughs> let's face it. <laughs> I don't. For all the parents who have kids out there, especially, you know, you get in, you know, you get in the moment, and all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, this is gonna be a great night, you know, and all of a sudden you hear a knock on the door, <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the expectations come in, because then we're like, all right, you know what? So something it didn't happen tonight or you know you're not taking anything personally and I right. think um, that's one thing that we've worked through greatly is when after without you knowing about my trauma you I didn't know how you feel how did you feel when I fully didn't express myself I, I knew there was something missing missing so I was like there's got to be something that's going on I, I knew there was something going on but I wasn't sure what it was but when when you told me I had the, you know when you told me about the trauma and everything I had this like release inside of me like that's what it was now I, I felt like we could that was one reason why we recommitted ourselves on our ceremony was I felt that we had a, a renewed relationship so we could move forward from there exploring everything like starting all over again you know it's like a new relationship we could just do as you wish and have you know no expectations letting go of everything and just moving mm -hmm. so it's been really exciting ever since then too yeah. not that our marriage and stuff didn't matter before it did but it just it went to a whole different level at that point right it really did and I, the reason i asked you that is because um even we went through this of not talking about it right right <clears throat> we went through you know it's not like you came out and asked me and it's not like I said right. up to yeah. that point in our lives where I had finally told you about everything that happened to me. And um, up until that point, we never, we didn't discuss it. We didn't communicate ourselves. So we had right. this big aha moment yeah. ourselves of what our relationship could be mm -hmm. like when we actually did have that communication. Hmm. And, you know, this was, this was a journey for us. This was a hard journey for us because we had to find our relationship all over again. We had to find ourselves all in the over process, again. right? And through it, that's why I was saying, you know, we learned of the expectations 
because we learn to let those expectations go. You know, if if a night didn't work out or if a day didn't work out, if we didn't communicate with each other, we were still being, you know, we were we were not saying, oh my gosh, you know, what did I do wrong? Or what did he do wrong? Or we we just kind of went with it. We said, okay, I understand something might be going on. You know, we can talk about it later, mm -hmm. but good to talk about it when you can. Right. And, you know, even these are even after the moment of being intimate in the bedroom. Right. These are especially important. Yeah, I think um, sexual abuse is more common, we realize, as a society. And sometimes even physical or verbal abuse, too, can, you know, affect individuals. So. And communication and letting go is all key ingredients in a good relationship because you just you can't live in the past. You gotta you gotta move in, in towards the future and you know create what you want. You know, and that leads us to the next point is boredom. I mean, when you don't have when you have those expectations and you're you're kind of doing the same stuff over and over again, you know it's it's just. Yeah. It gets boring after a while. It's almost like a chore and, you know, who wants to do chores, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, you think you're going through this flow and you're just like, oh, everything's okay. You know, he, he likes it this way or she likes it that way. When the truth is, you can really spice it up. And we're not talking about big things here. You know, yeah. this this is fun stuff for us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this you know, but boredom can easily bog down a relationship. Yeah. And, you know, we are talking about the bedroom here. Yep. But, you know. We're outside the bedroom. If, outside. if you didn't want to spice it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we're talking about the bedroom intimacy part and mm -hmm. the boredom. But when there is that, you know, when there's that boredom in the bedroom, too, and on that intimate level, your relationship is affected too and the right. relationship of everybody and everybody that you encounter you know because you're like it's the same thing over and over i get up i go to work I, you know i have to meatloaf on wednesday pizza on friday yeah i, mean, I gotta schedule in the time that we're gonna go in the bedroom you know yeah. this is what this is what we're talking about here this is you know but you know doing the same thing over and over again you know expecting what yeah, I mean, if you if you can remember the days when you were in love, and remember how it was, how we you couldn't wait to see each other, and you couldn't wait to you know have sex and you know do all those crazy things. Well, that's you know when you have a when you don't have that when you have that boredom, you you, you kind of lose that. You kind you're like you're smothering the sparks out from the fire, so you can't really rekindle anything. Do you remember when you were off to college? And this is when we first met and you had, um, we would, you would go away for the week mm -hmm. and I would be working. And then on Friday, I knew he was coming home for two days and he would come home on the weekend. I couldn't wait to see him. And it was like, all right, what, you know, what am I going to wear? Because it was like, you know, I had to dress to impress because, you know, it was like that, you know, you remember that spark yeah. that was. You know, that's the spark that we're talking right. about. You know, you don't have to lose that. Right. So that other blunder is no spontaneity. So, I mean, that's what we're talking about here is, you know, you know, falling in love once is easy, but falling in love over and over again, that's where the relationship can really grow and continue moving forward and, you know, having that excitement and fun and the passion in your relationship. I mean... That's something special that we all can do this. We can all have this awesome relationship if we choose to do it. Yeah, I, mean, I know that um, we once we did our recommitment ceremony, um, we really bonded. Mm -hmm. So such on this most beautiful level that, you know, each day is a new day for us. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you know, we do something different every day. There's different things we're working on. But there's also, you know, there's different levels of that being present. Right. There's different, you know, and we're not just talking like being in front of the one that you're with. We're talking about actually being present, listening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the spontaneity comes in because, you know, hey, how about giving a nice phone call over the phone when they're at work? Yeah. Or just, you know, when 
going somewhere. I was leaving a little note. Didn't I do that a yeah. couple of weeks, you know, in my lunch weeks or ago? something? Yeah. So that's the stuff we're talking about. Just when you when you have that when you lose that spontaneity, sorry, you know, you're just creating a habit of doing something over and over yeah. and over again. Well, I think. Yeah. You know, we're humans, so, we, you know, we have a tendency to create habits. So, I mean, when we don't have those habits, that's when that growth and excitement and all that comes in. But, I mean, what took, I think one of the things I love about our connection is when we talk about the presence is, you know, look, look, when you talk to someone, especially your partner, your, you know, your partner, your spouse, you know, look them in the eye when you speak to someone. I love this because... I don't mean to jump in. Do you? No, go ahead. Just the other night, we were having our moment in the bedroom, and you said to me, you said, I love your eyes. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I knew that you were present. You weren't off thinking someplace else. You were, you know, you were with me. You were present, mm -hmm. you know. And during these intimate moments, this is when we're bringing in the presence. Be present. Communicate. If something, tell your partner something you love about be present at this moment at this very intimate moment and when you do this because we found this too mm -hmm. that when you do this you start doing it outside of the bedroom right yep. and that's you know that's critical because it flows when you get intimate in that level it flows yeah and i actually like with the light on or during the day because i can see her eyes so i love looking into her eyes but also being able to touch her and grace her and, you know, honor her body because, you know, we're sharing an intimate space, but it's also a vulnerability. And I think where the intimacy really comes in is when you're vulnerable. When you can be vulnerable, that's where you can build trust and have that growth because, you know, that's a weakness in us, vulnerability. So if we can get beyond that, I mean, it's really, really something nice. Yeah, this was hard for me. I never, uh, this was a hard place for me because of what happened to me, that I never would, I never liked you seeing me with the light on. Mm -hmm. You know, this was hard. This was hard to get through. Right. Because I never saw myself in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And once I, once I, like, healed this part of myself, and I started to really find that place in myself where I let, like, this guard down yeah it was definitely noticeable too yeah and so now you know those moments you know leave the light on it's ladies he loves to see you in your full presence this one and it's hard even after kids <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you know this is a place where i am living fully my experience from it's not easy but you know, this is the place where he gets to tell you the beautiful things he loves about you. Open yourself to receive it. Yep. It does, it makes, and open, when you open yourself to receive it, gosh, you will, you start seeing yourself in this most beautiful light. And you'll, you'll see the difference in him too. You know, the little things, the little things that he comes up and, you know, the tap on the butt, it <laughs> means something, you know. <laughs> Don't take it as, you know, oh, what do you want? Take it as, you know, oh my gosh, he's, he's acknowledging my presence. Yeah. One thing we never, ever have ever done in a relationship, we've, we've never used sex as a weapon or as a as a motivator. It was never considered even at that level at all. Because it's, like we said, it's something, it's sacred. And this is a, a time and place where you can share that union with one another. You know, right. and create that sacred space and right. the sacred <laughs> union of the two of you to create one right i mean this this is also i'm glad you brought this up because this is key it's never like we said oh well you know you're not getting any tonight you were like okay if you're not feeling good and you can communicate that to your partner openly and honestly he'll understand it be yeah. honest with him like look i've had a really hard day with the kids you know could you just hold me tonight mm -hmm. and wow that's pretty amazing and you have done this so many times and i have you know I've done this in, with you, and it's that open and honest. But then there's nights where we're like, hey, I'm right. You know, that spontaneity kicks Almost in. Almost every night. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, you know, that spontaneity kicks in, and we're like, hey, let's let's have a date night tonight. We had this just happen the other night. My parents called up and said, hey, you know,
know, we want to know if the kids can come up for the day. What came in the mail? A movie. We were going to rent the movie, or we were going to watch the movie. Yep. Movie never got watched. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, those are the moments. Hey, spontaneity. Hey, you know, yeah. this is your moment. The kids are away, especially even more funner. But, you know, this is your moment. That's Take you advantage of it. Put the blanket on the, on the floor and sit by the fire if you have a fireplace and, you know, really... Spice it up. Spend a lot of time. And, and spend <laughs> a lot of time. And this... Your intimate moments will come through this time. That's why we're saying, you know, take action and take advantage of this moment to really get intimate with your partner. Yep. Be spontaneous, spontaneous and but get yep. intimate. Talk to each other. Sometimes we have those quickies. They're always fun. Sometimes when we have kids, you gotta sneak them in anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> but this this helps keep the variety yeah. in your life. And, you know, one of the things we found, too, is change positions and... <laughs> change positions? Yeah, and, you know, when you, when you, just before you get to that peak is when you stop and maybe you start kissing or something or change positions or, you know... We're getting deep and deep down here. <laughs> yeah, just because it's absolutely it, true. Yeah, just because it, it, it just makes that experience that much more um, awesome. It's just... Uh, uh, Especially the kissing, you know, sometimes uh, you just melt me away with a kiss. <laughs> melt your partner away because it, let me tell you. Thank those French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call it French kissing for no reason. But those are, you know, these are all important aspects of of keeping that intimacy alive and keeping you together with that that special sacred connection right. that only you can have with your partner. You know, this is about you and your partner having that most beautiful connection and taking your level, taking your relationship to a level that is unimaginable. Yeah, and it's hard with society because society portrays sex as a negative thing. I know a lot of religions put it down and stuff like that, but I think they missed the point of, you know, getting in touch with the creator and, you know, that, that energy, that's creative energy. You know, when you're having that connection, you're, you know, you're making, well, supposedly, you know, you're making a baby. So that's, you know, that's creative energy. And that's, you know, that's a very special thing when you can get in touch with the creator and the elicity and the elation of those feelings of creation, of, of that union, the sacred union of the two, two, you know, the two that join in the one. I had a hard time with this because I didn't know what that was supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and you know, I feel from my own experience, you know, from my own experience that that's hard going into a relationship in the beginning. That's something that is so developed over time. Especially growing up Catholic, so. Yeah, I mean, I really wasn't <laughs> sure where I, where I was supposed to be at with mm -hmm. this with this and it was really hard because you're like you know you get you get married you're together with somebody and you know i know for us we didn't have you know our first child for a while after we were married so we were able to really start exploring some areas of our relationship that we really got to know before kids came in that doesn't happen for everybody but it was really special for us um because we really got to discover that part of the relationship of being together before the kids were born. But I know that um, I didn't know that area. So I didn't know that's where the expectation came through because, you know, you put yourself in this expectation of what that intimate part of your relationship is supposed to be. Right. And if something happens, the minute something happens, you could feel let down. Yeah. And the truth is it's a journey of, <clears throat> of two souls being together. And that's, when you put yourself in that position and that thought and you let those expectations go, it does really open things up wonderfully. You know, you know, society really doesn't teach us about, you know, sex education in a way that's on an intimate level. It's always about safety and precautions and consequences, you know, and that the only thing we really see if we're not taught by our parents or anything is on TV and that has a very, um, doesn't represent it in a, in a fashion that's, you know, that conductive to a relationship, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's really hard for anyone really to know 
what it should be. And like we said, we always, it's always sacred. We always, when we're done, we always say thank you to each other and you're welcome because, you know, that is a sacred moment yeah, and a moment. connection. And, you know, it's not only a physical connection, but the spiritual connection also. So we really regard it as a really sacred thing that we hold true to true and very special in our relationship. It is. Yeah. And I always, um, I always have the thought of, of how wonderful it is, even at nighttime, you know, when we go to bed, of, you know, of holding each other in that space, you know, you know, we're, we're even intimate at that connection level of really like when we cuddle with each other and, you know, you, I wrap my arms around you and you hold my hand. That's a, that's like a beautiful intimate moment. So there's you know, like intimate moments that you can be together, mm-hmm. you know, without the actual, you know, yeah. physical aspect of it, right. you know, holding each other, you know, kissing, it, talking. It's talking. We never go to bed mad at each other. So let's... that's a number one rule. Right. In this house. <laughs> Even if it's right before you go to sleep, talk it out and then go to sleep because you don't want to go to bed angry and what, wake up angry? That's not good. Yeah. It, <clears throat> it doesn't lead to, you know, you're building, a, you're, you're building something here and you're building trust. And, you know, when you have that communication, you're building on something even greater. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's like a big rule in our house yep. for us. And it always has been. So it's not like there's times where in the beginning of a relationship where it didn't happen. But that's okay because we've learned, right. you know, we've, we've outgrew that, created a, a nice new habit of making sure that we never go to bed. Um, just, it doesn't matter the littlest thing. You know, if you got something on your mind, let it out. Right. Let it out. Don't keep it in because it, you know, it causes some negative aspects in there. And when someone's talking, make sure you're listening too. Don't, don't try to rush in and judge and solve their problems. And most of the time they just want to be heard, not solutions or opinions or anything like that. It's just listening. I've had to learn that myself. And then if they want your opinion, they'll, I'm sure they'll, you know, they'll ask, you know? Yeah. Um, I find this is even important when we're listening to our children. This doesn't happen just in your, right. you know, intimate connection with your partner. This is very special. I just heard the words from our daughter the other day, you know, um, when she said to me, she says, you're not listening. And she says, Sometimes you don't understand me. And the truth is, <laughs> as she's growing, I've come to find out that, you know, she's eight years old and that's okay. I may not understand her fully, but I myself even have to sometimes remember, slow down, be present, be present, listen and let her get her full sentence out. Even if I already know what she's going to say, right. I have to learn. And so that, you know, I just want to point out that this isn't just, you know, with your partner. No. This is everybody. Right. Yep. But it's, it really begins when you can be with in that space with your partner. Yep. Yeah, communication, I know it's, it's hard for a lot of people, but I mean, if you really want to have a life that you really desire, I mean, communication is probably the most biggest thing that there is. We, we not mm-hmm. only have this in a relationship, we actually have this in the business that we're doing right now. Right. And we had it in the business when we were farming, it was, Key communication. If you don't know what's going on, mm-hmm. you can you, you you can't create that great business or that business. Right. So we find this even as entrepreneurs, yep, working together to keep this communication lines of communication open. So we always know what's going on with each other, what you know we're creating, what we're doing, you know, asking opinions. I mean, we're still doing this outside of the intimate level into mm-hmm. our business today. So it's yep. so you can you can get the sense of how it begins with your relationship and you can bring it into other areas of your life. I mean, this, this journey on earth is not, it's not a solo journey and, you know, we're all in this together and we really, we need to learn how to communicate with one another and each other, you know, to all of our, our spouses, our family members, our boss, our, you know, all, all of our relationships that we, you know, we have on this journey. And it's so important for all of us to work together as, you know, one human family. Yeah. So, I know what time it is. I think it's time for a happy place meditation. Yay! It's always a good way to start off. I know that sometimes Mondays 
people can really have that expectation of, oh my gosh, it's Monday. So that's why uh, we love bringing you this show on Monday. Yep. Changing it up, making it magical. Yep. And as always, I mean, our happy place meditation but we have enhanced this meditation. It's, it's still evolving, but we, you know, we finally we spent the weekend uh, recording this and, you know, editing it. I put it up on, you know, like YouTube and yeah, mixing it with, you know, a little bit of sound. So stayed up late one night. Yeah, it was like one o'clock in the morning. We got done the one night, <laughs> trying to get it all done. I don't think we had a complete work schedule that day <laughs> because we were really off. <laughs> So that's why, you know, that's why we love bringing you, you know, this show, but especially I like keeping it on Monday because mm-hmm. it kicks in something different to get out of that, you know, that manic Monday, <laughs> manic Monday. <laughs> whatever you feel your Monday is, we hope that we can bring you something really happy yeah. here with it. That's why we're sharing. We want to give you guys tools so you can make your your life happy and successful in your life and business. So. Right. And that's, you know, we're very passionate about that. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Yep. And, you know, we're still on this journey. We're learning so much stuff new. And you're on our journey with us. So thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we, we're so happy that you're with us on this journey. So I guess we'll go into it. Now I can actually go into the meditation with you instead of, uh, you know, guiding you through it. So Go into it right now. Happy place meditation. Go within to what you cherish, love, and hold sacred. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Then out. As you're sitting there, with your eyes closed, sense the clear blue sky above with the warmth of the sun. As you take your next breath in, pull that sunshine into you, lighting up every cell in your body and soul. With your exhale, push all the darkness out, your worries, doubts, and fears. Now feel your feet on the ground. With your next breath in, Share that sunshine with the earth. Push it deep into her core. Lighting up every part of the earth. And when you exhale, bring that light back through your body, out of your head, back to the sun, then spreading it throughout the universe, lighting up the entire universe. Now that you are filled with light, place your hand on your heart. Feel that rhythm. Think of a time, place, event, person or feeling you hold dear. Your happy place. Feel the feeling of your heart expanding with joy and bliss. Isn't that amazing?
your overall well-being, the calmness, the warmth of your heart, and your soul. Stay here for as long as you like. Here, you transcend time. Know that love is a choice. You have the power to change your life. You have the power to influence change by living the example of love. You have greatness within, for you have the power to choose love. And love is the most powerful in the act of compassion towards yourself and others. The power of you is the power of love. And we're back. Yes, we are. <laughs> I mean, usually at this time I go over, you know, what this meditation can be used for, but I think, you know, use it the way that you feel to use it. You right. know, we've used it at, you know, a children's workshop that we taught at, mm -hmm. but we've really, we really built it upon some of our own realizations we did. of, yep. you know, our own happy places and what makes us, you know, feel at ease in the heart and, you know, you, it's a tool. Right. You know, it's important to center yourself. And one of the reasons, how, one of the reasons, or one of the reasons why we developed this was uh, we were having trouble receiving guidance from, you know, we have a prayer, thoughts out there to the universe, and we were, you know, the answers would come, but we would seem like we got misguided. So, we knew there was something that was us, because obviously you know, the angels aren't going to give us the wrong, you know, guidance and answers. So we knew that there had to be something going on with us. So we developed this so we could get ourselves out of the way to receive those messages. You know, this is why it's so important to meditate and center yourself, because if you don't, you're, you're basically mingling your current your current understanding of yourself and this, and you know you're getting bogged down with fears frustrations worries doubts um and you're getting caught up as a victim in your circumstances so in order to get out of that victimization and into love that's the place to be because love is the center of everything you know the universe god creation all that so if we can get in get in that zone now we can receive our guidance and it we our guidance and you know direction has taken off since we started doing this. And we're doing this on a more regular basis too, because like I said, you know, we we practice what we preach. So we you know we listen to this and we you know we follow it and enjoy it and um you know it's really been great for us and the kids too, they love it also. So I mean it's been a great tool for us. It's really taken us to a whole new level and that's why I want to share it with you. I've, I've also included the link to this in the description of the radio show, so you can click on that link and go to YouTube where that video is at. Yeah, um, we're also we're going to be creating more of these as well. We actually have one um, that's ready. You know, maybe we'll share that next week. I'm not sure yet, but yep. um, like we said, we're going back to our own guidance here. Right. And that's what it's going back to. You know, Eric mentioned about mentioned about being in that place of love you know when you feel something is right to you that's your center mm -hmm. and that's the guidance you can use to the you know in your business your career your life your everyday interactions when you're driving down the road do i go this way do i go that way it's your inner guidance yeah, you can think of your happy place to bring it right to that moment right away um, like we said in the meditation that you transcend time so you don't have to be there for a long period of time a second can really put you there in yeah, no time. and you know um 
I, I've mentioned it before that, you know, we we use it as, you know, when you're anxious or, mm -hmm. you know, feeling a little stressed or maybe if you're nervous. We've done, we did this meditation before we started today, uh, but it really just helps you center and bring you back to your place, wherever that place is for you. Because, you know, this is about you. We're giving right. this, we're, we're sharing this with you as a tool for you, you know, to, to help you. Because another thing you have to remember, too, is when you're going through circumstances or you're trying to create something new, you know, you do have your fears and doubts and worries and anxiety, but you have to be able to recognize the difference between those and putting them off to the side so you can have the courage to move forward. Because you're always gonna, there's always going to be some level of fear there, no matter what you do. I don't care what level you get to, that is always going to be there. But so it's about managing it, and that's huge. That's a huge step for anyone. If you can learn how to manage your fear, and this is what this tool does, then you can pretty much do what you have always wanted to do and get the results you've always wanted. Yeah, create the awesome relationship you've right. always wanted. You yeah. know, that's that's what that's all of what we're talking about. Right. Meditation has been, you know, a huge um, reliever of stress for me personally. I know that because I used, I used to get nervous and, you know, all that stuff before. And now it's just like, even this morning we did a meditation because I just wasn't, this morning I just woke up, I must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something. <laughs> but I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do a meditation. We're going to do a happy place meditation. You know, let's get ourselves into a good zone. You know, our happy place, and it just it does make a big difference. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. It's like, I couldn't really feel that this morning with you. I could tell you were a little off, but you know, on the I said, good morning. You know, the kids got off to school very nicely, and I think even that uh, meditation for me helped me bring me back because you know, if, as a mom, if you have those mornings where you know you're a little stressed, that's it's a good tool to use it as well. But it helps me bring me back to focus on what we had to do. Yeah, a lot of people think meditation is a hard thing. You got to concentrate, and you got it's not. You don't let go of all those expectations. You know, it's not about um, you know, like we said before, having all these expectations of what you think should happen. I mean, you're gonna get that mind chatter. But you know what I do? I just let it go. I don't engage it. I just observe it. And when you become, and you get to the point where you're you're observing life instead of reacting to life. You go to a whole different level. Well, you actually go with that spontaneity of things. Yeah. That's that's what's really amazing about it. You're not like set up like what do I have to do next? And you know, there don't get me wrong, there is people who, you know, are in those very you know, they know what they have to do and they go do it. But, you know, these are often the times where we're just saying, Go with the flow of something. Hey, a friend calls up for lunch, you know. Or, you know, even your, your partner says, you know, meet me at work. Let's go have some lunch. Mm -hmm. Boom. Go with it. Yep. That's, you know, those are those are the little things we're talking about with that. Oh, yeah. So it's an important tool. You know, one thing about meditation is not religious. It's neutrality. So, I mean, I mean it's a great, great tool to have. Um, you know, um, I do share that tool over on our Facebook quite a bit. And, you know, you can find it linked in to the YouTube, like you said. Yep. And um, I also, I share a lot over on our Facebook page. So they're always on there too. Google too now. And Google, yes, Google Plus. <laughs> so we're over on there too. So, you know, if you need to find these, there's always a space to find them. Yep. I mean, <clears throat> I really started looking at life differently after my father passed away from a, you know, lengthy illness with cancer and I've seen how he viewed life, you know, his last few years as, you know, making those memories and making every moment count and really got me in touch with a lot of things. I used to be a workaholic, you know, that's all I really you know, the farm, the farm, you know, and working and even before we had the farm, sometimes I had two jobs, three jobs. I mean, you just work, work, work and no play and and this is you know, life is too short to be living it too hard. So, I mean that's you know, one of the, one of the reasons why we created our free e our ebook. Well, it's you know it's available free to anybody who wants to check it out. Habits that create a happy habits that create a happy, excited, confident you. <laughs> so that link is also available in the description. So yeah, um, you know, you were talking about the time when you 
you know, had that realization after your dad passed away. Mm -hmm. And after we really, after we had our recommitment ceremony, but when I really started to get back to myself and find out who I was, I really started to notice those moments that matter. You know, the little things the kids say, the little stuff in our relationship. That was my biggest transformation. I started to see life differently, but I also started to see a light shine within myself. And, you know, my biggest thing for me is when you can find that light that's shining within yourself, mm -hmm. you're, you're beginning to feel differently about how you're making a difference yeah. in overall life, not just for yourself, you know, but you're, you're coming into contact with people and people are saying, oh, you know, your happiness is radiating. Right. You start to emanate. Right. And that's not in a selfish way, but no. when people vibrationally feel that radiation and that happiness and that light and not every day is that day but that, you know that's when we bring in that those tools but that's when my biggest transformation happened is when i really started to see life that life wasn't bad right bad things happen right people make bad choices i i even had to come to the point where i had to forgive myself right for this and so I really started to get out of that victim mode of, oh my God, this really bad thing happened to me. But life is so much more beautiful than those it bad is. things that happened to me. That's right. And that's one of the, you know, that's why we we're so passionate about the the guidebook, yeah, the free yeah, guidebook. It's out there because, you know, it's just, life is just too short. And yeah, you gotta and we had to full. share our story. And that's, that was the biggest <laughs> thing. We're like, we have this story inside of us that needed to be shared mm -hmm. and we felt it was so important to get that story out because when you're getting that story out you can touch so many people in such beautiful ways mm -hmm. yeah you know, <clears throat> you know this, is, this has been a great testing ground for us this has been our beta uh you know series our first three series to so get to know what we need to do and how we can go about our radio shows and we're going to really start to go into our, our, our big passion is that book. And that's going to be our next is, uh, you know, creating a habit, habits that create a happy, excited, confident you. That's going to be a whole series. We're going to go into basically four key elements that have created our happiness and success in life and the business. You know, that, you know, thyself, you know, really, really important. It's been our, our biggest. It's the core, realization, yeah. the core of everything. Because if you love yourself, you can't love others in a truly honest, open way. Yeah, we really, um, you know, these these um elements, we're breaking them up. Yep. In the guy in the guidebook, we're we're you know we're breaking them up for you. Mm -hmm. And you know they each one has its own different aspect. Right. You know thyself and. Yep. and then we go into your career, your you know your life path. You know, basically following your passion because. It's a totally different life when you're following your passion. I mean, imagine waking up every day, being excited and elated, you know, instead of dreading the day. I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge difference. I actually threw my alarm clock out this weekend. <laughs> so it's like, you know what? I don't even need this anymore. You've had that thing forever. Yeah, that's something my grandma gave me like 20-some years ago. You know, but it's really about, you know, getting out there and, you know, this is where we delve into um, finding – and we say finding your passion, but really it's discovering. about discovering right. what you are passionate or about it. Yeah. or creating it. Yeah. And, you know, in this part, we go, we give you more tools, you know, more tools to just to really connect with yourself and, you know, ask yourself, you know, what do I love? Mm -hmm. What moves me? What inspires me to get up out of bed in the morning? And yep. Even it, throw that alarm clock away. It makes things a lot easier. You can make choices easier. You can make, you're going to have your falls, no doubt. I mean, that's just life. But it's better, it's easier to get back up when you're passionate about something. Yeah. I, it's, it's so, like, I discovered this after I went through what I went through. And then when I released it, I started to write. Yeah. And I was writing and writing and writing. And, but I really started to find out that, wow. I am so passionate about writing. And then I started, when I started to share it, I started to touch people in a way. Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh my gosh, this passion of mine is overflowing exactly. into something that I can create and yep. be of service to people. And it was so beautiful that 
I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because yeah. it was like, wow, I am really passionate about helping and being of service to people. That's like I said before, we're all in this together. So when we can create our own life path in a way that's influential, not necessarily you have to change people, but people aspire when you they're inspired when you able to follow your passions and you know spread that love and compassion in so many different ways and it's just it helps them to realize things too in life so it's you know it's, it's really amazing to see all this stuff unfold once you start doing it yeah and um because that folds into the next key element of your relationship, relationship right and you know the relationship with the one that you're with and then, like we were talking before, it extending out right. into all relationships. Well, if you're going to work every day, something you don't like, you don't like your boss, you don't like what you have to do, and guess what? I come home with all that stuff. I did. And that's one of the, the probably one of the biggest pushes. I said, you know what? I'm done with this, working for other people. I'm going to follow my passion and do what I want to do. Yeah, you took a big leap of faith. Right. In doing that. Well, you, we also realized during that that um, how wonderful it is that you gain the freedom right. to do what you're really passionate about. And, you know, the freedom you feel that, you know, that moment, you know, you give yourself the freedom to, to do that, you know. And this isn't just talking about, like, leaving your job. This is talking about, like, cause, you know, there's people, people who are out there in position who love their job. Exactly, yeah. But we're talking about creating more of that, you know, great relationship within your workspace. Or taking it to another level. Right. You already love your job. I mean, take it to the next level. You know, you're sitting at your desk and you've got all your happy place stuff around your desk and making it. People are going to see that inspired. And you can even inspire somebody else to have a really great day at work, too. Yeah. What makes you happy? You know, they're going to start asking you questions. Why are you so happy all the time? Yeah. What are you doing and I'm not doing? You know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, what we're, that's where we're talking about because it ultimately comes down to your spiritual journey journey that's the, the other component that's our final component of the, of the book and we feel all of these are just as important there's no one that's more important than the other they're all equally as important and having a spiritual journey that's unique to yourself because you know we all are unique beings and obviously we're going to have unique likes and dislikes and things that resonate with us and things that don't and i think it's important to not be in this not to have a box and something that's so expansive, but something that can be expansive, so you can grow and not be, you know, in those dogmas or beliefs or things that are going to really damper your 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 life, really. Yeah, because it's really about the connection to yourself, you know, and that's what it's really about. And when you let go and you give yourself the room to explore with your possibilities, your journey and the connection with yourself becomes almost endless. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that infinite power within that you have to put yourself, to create, to put yourself in a, a most beautiful place here now at this present moment, to yeah. create the happiness, you know, but kind of getting back to like, you got to change your ways, you know, you have, you feel like you're stuck in a place. Yeah. The, the good news is, is that it's a, more, it's, a more, it's a place that you can get out of. Right. And I, we actually know some people that actually do follow religion. But they also, you know, do other spiritual things like meditate and, you know, do right. some other spiritual things that would not normally be in a church, like Reiki, and but they still follow the church. And that, that's fine. I mean, whatever is unique to you is right for you. So Exactly. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's how right. I was going to say it. Whatever is unique to you is right for you. And that's your journey. Right. And there's other people that come along on this journey, which is really wonderful. They come along. They may go. But it's your journey, and ultimately, you know, you have to f- go with what's right for you. Right. And we can't stress, you know, we can't stress that more importantly of going what's right for you. We've learned that so much. Yeah. Through our own stuff, through creating our own business, you know, there's guidance. You know, I always say the doctor at the doctor's office is your doctor there for guidance. The same thing in the people that you encounter they're they're for guidance but really it comes back to the connection of yourself you are the yep. source yep. sources within everything so those are the things we're going to be talking about in our next series so we're really looking forward to that we're excited we're we can't wait you know we like I said we took took us what two years to create this book yeah i mean this um 
the success in our business so far that we've created and we've you know we've focused it clearly on a business mm -hmm. um it feels really good mm -hmm. and so anybody can do it yeah um this book applies to any even individuals even if you don't have a business i mean it doesn't really it's put your passions in your life if you want to you know follow through with your job and retire from that job but you know have those hobbies or passions that you can come home to and do them as often as you possibly can because it's going to make a huge difference in your life. Yeah, you know, say you want to take a, an adventure, you know, you're passionate about going somewhere, you always say, oh, I really, I always wanted to go there, you know, even those little things like that, that's the passions we're talking about. Yep. But I just want to say that it is a free guidebook. It is, and it's available because like we said, you know, the, your life and your dreams are so important. We know what it's like not to know what to do, and we've created this guidebook so you guys can have a better, you know, it may not work for you, everything that we teach, but, you know, if it's just a little thing that gets you that far ahead, just one little thing, I mean, it can make a huge difference in your life. Yeah, because we're sharing just from our experiences of what we went through, and um, that's that's pretty important because you're we're living from our own experience. Yep. You know, there might be something that, you connect to in one part of it and might not connect to another part of it, and that's okay. Yep. But we we want to share with you, you know, the most we can. Yeah, because we're, you know, it's about time there was a guide out there for everybody, right? <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why we do it. Yeah, right. So, um, and that, like I said, so next time, join us. Grab that book and meet us here next week when we're going to be starting these series. And we're going to start out with, you know, focusing on the first part of the book. And we'll dive into thyself a little bit and see how far we get. They can, with it. they can download it from the link, right? They can, yeah. Okay. Should be able to go right to the link, download it, and then you can even start today and start going over it. It's great. It's a great book. And looking forward to you guys looking at it and enjoying it and, you know, creating the life that you really deserve to have. And, you know, everyone deserves to be happy and excited and free. And, you know, it's just, life is precious. Before we leave you today, we have homework again. Yep. It's not that hard homework. We just want you to do something today, today, this week. Um, Be spontaneous, partner. I'm talking little things here. If you want to do the take it into the bedroom, that's great. Want to bring her lunch at work? Fine. Yeah, give her a text message, leave her a note. Him, you know, we're talking in general here. But whatever, just take something spontaneous and do it. That's your homework. It's not hard. It doesn't take a lot. Just a little bit, you know, just just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you guys being here. We, you know, we love you guys. And yeah, we, we honor this journey that you're on, and we are so happy that you can be with us on our journey as well, here with us. We we honor that. So until next time, Same. laugh often, and love openly. Thanks. Bye-bye.